Hey everybody, welcome to the first episode of Still Good, where uh, I revisit some older shows that uh, I watched. Usually, at least at the start for right now, they're going to be around uh, from like the late 90s, early 2000s. And the first episode we have is uh, Mona Vampire. Um, I'm Tyler LaCroix, by the way. And so this is the first first episode of Still Good. And I just want to talk about some shows that I don't really hear many people talk about very often. And I think we're good. And I want to just revisit them and figure out if they're still good. Thus the name of the show. So Mount of the Vampire was a, uh, was a show that was on from, I think, uh, 99 to 2000 or something they they kept i guess uh they made four seasons it says which i had no idea they had four seasons i thought i watched a lot of this show but i feel like i've only watched maybe two seasons like i feel like i've seen a lot of the same episodes so i had no idea they uh lasted four seasons i guess they changed production places and whatnot but um so mona the vampire mostly was in, uh, or I guess only, was in Canada, and then later it went to France. Um, but that's it. So I thought it was maybe uh, went to America too, but apparently not. So uh, Canadian show lasted, yeah, four seasons, which was surprising surprised to me. And I also didn't realize, although it says at the start of the show, but I like I haven't watched the show in a long time. But it was based on a book series, I guess, by uh, Sonia Holliman, is I guess her name. And uh, I guess it was a, a series of children books that was written in the 90s. Like I said, it was only out for a little bit. I never, I had no idea there was books of it. You'd think I would know that or I would have seen it like in Scholastic or something. Maybe they were in Scholastic. I just don't remember it. But uh, yeah, so this is a, a show... Kind of while revisiting it, I mean, it's really about a child that's going through psychosis and it's kind of frightening, but um, it's supposed to be about this girl named Mona who uh, has a very active imagination and so she she's super into uh, kind of mythology and like vampires and beasts and, and kind of all that uh, supernatural stuff and she imagines all these crazy things happening in her world that aren't really actually happening, but she kind of has all these uh, crazy ideas and, like, like uh, yeah, imagination of just, like, normal stuff is going on. She sees it differently. It seems to me, as I rewatch it, that she's going through a lot of psychotic episodes and people are kind of just laughing it off and being like, oh, Mona. And so, uh, yeah, I'm going to go through just a bit of the episode and then give my thoughts of what I think, if I still think it's good or not, after all these years. Um, so like I said, it is a very strange show that now in revisiting it, it does seem like Mona is going through psychotic episodes. Um, but yeah, so like I said, it's based on uh, books by Sonia Holliman, which I never read, but I kind of want to just to see what they were like. When I was looking up stuff um, for this episode, I guess I read that the first few two or three uh books didn't really it was like Mona the vampire I guess but it was more about Mona kind of being into weird stuff and having a different obsession of the day or whatever and then uh I guess another person started helping or working with Holly on the rest of the books and they kind of made it into a more succinct of just like the, she's kind of a vampire chick she's into vampire stuff and uh yeah this kind of weird world and so yeah that's another thing too uh, Mona the vampire the reason she's called Mona the vampire is that when she goes through these psychotic breaks sometimes she feels uh she, she goes home and comes back or I guess maybe she has her outfit with her at school too but she has kind of a crazy wig and a cape and fangs she doesn't really change anything else though I guess Looking at her, she still wears her same shirt and stuff. But yeah, she puts on a, a cape and a crazy wig and fangs and becomes a vampire. And I don't I don't know why she's a vampire exactly. Her friend is dressed like 
the tick almost. And then she has another friend that's dressed like a a princess that's like a meth addict or something. It looks it's very strange. Also the uh the eyelashes, the way they make girls' eyelashes in the show, it's like they have three eyelashes, but they're so thin and when they some characters have makeup on them, it kind of just makes it look like uh like yeah, just a girl, a, a rough looking girl. Looks like they're all a bit rough like when you see girls with just very thin eyelashes and like kind of uh, makeup not very well done, just like purple makeup around the eye that's that's kind of just smudged. I don't know. It gives a weird appearance, though. <laughs> At least that's that's what it seems like to me. But uh, so yeah, Beast by Books by Sonia Holyman. I said that. Um, so Mona has uh, in this episode. So uh, each episode, I'm I'm guessing it's this for every episode, but it's like a two part episode. So uh, it's like there's like 12 minutes for, or I guess like 11 minutes for one episode, 11 minutes for another episode. So the first part of this episode, um, the Sam and Ella thing that I remember is this, in the second part. But then the first part of this episode, uh, it's called The Book of the Slimy. And so uh, Mona, I guess, has like a, a monster an- manual uh, akin to the E. e- Gary Gygax uh, D&D manual. And uh, so she brings that to class, and she's so attached to it, she doesn't want anybody to take it, that she uh, attaches a rope to it, and she puts it on the desk or whatever for show, but the rope is attached to her wrist, just so nobody will take it, which doesn't really make sense as we go on to the episode, um, because there's like a, there's like kind of a shaking and an earthquake, and uh I think maybe an alarm goes off and everybody has to... All right, no, it's a fire alarm. That's what it is. There is a fire alarm, so everybody has to go outside. And uh, Mona has her book there attached to the string. And her teacher says to like leave the book or whatever and leave the string because it's a fire drill. And in Mona's brain, this is a very special book. Like This is very important. And if it gets into the wrong hands or something happens to it, there's monsters in the book, apparently, too. So it's like maybe a bit of a Necronomicon or like a, some kind of H.G. Wellsian book that has monsters inside of it. Um, but I guess it's super important. And if you leave it, these monsters could get out. But all it takes is Mona's teacher to say, now we have to go outside. This is a fire drill. It's serious. And Mona just leaves it there instead of insisting to bring the book and just leave him because the teacher would have had to listen to her. The teacher wasn't going to leave a kid inside the building. If she just said, no, I need this book. It's like, I don't see what's a big deal for the teacher. Just let you take a book with you. Especially if it's like this kid that's having psychotic episodes that's attached to this book. It's like, it just make your life a lot easier. Just let her take the book with her. But evidently Mona listens to her teacher. And so she leaves the book there and wouldn't you know it when they get back from the from the fire drill? But yeah, obviously it gets taken, and then the rest of the episode is her trying to figure out what happened to the book and get it back under the control to get the beasts and ghouls that are coming out of it out of control, or back back under control. I should, should <coughs> I should say. And so another thing with Mona is that so she has these two friends, Charlie and. Lily, I believe, is the other character's name. Um, I think I wrote it down. But yeah, I believe it's Charlie and Lily are her two friends. So Charlie is obviously the the kid that, you know, I would have been that just went along with this crazy girl because she's cute and weird. And uh, they believe her completely. But I don't think they see the same thing she does. I think it's all kind of a weird... Mona psychosis and they believe her kind of like she's a crazy cult leader and these are her two uh her two uh what would be the word her two students or her two uh dis- disciples I guess so that's weird because they they just completely believe her now I would like to watch uh the first episode again maybe just to get an idea of like maybe there's something happened there's a reason that they completely believe her. But at this point in the series, um, I'm not sure. Let's see if I can find. uh, So this is season one. 
episodes 17 and 18, but they put it into uh, one episode. But so this is still in season one, but a little bit later in the season. So like six, seven episodes in, I guess, since they're two part episodes. But yeah, since this is uh, season season one, about seven episodes in, I guess, I don't, I don't know, they drank the Kool-Aid. They they completely believe Mona, even if they don't see stuff. They She's sending them notes and stuff, and they're just immediately believing her. And it's kind of frightening, because as the show goes on, it's like she's really doing shit. She's attacking things. She's She's seeing shit. It's very real to her. And that's a bit frightening, because it's like, sure, it's fun and games now, but this bitch gets older. I'm sorry, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be swearing in this. I feel like this should be more more uh, of a fran- f- family-friendly show. But I mean, yeah, I mean, this bitch is crazy. I can't, I can't not say it, but this is... And I don't like to talk badly about mental health and stuff, but like, this bitch is crazy and nobody's doing anything about it. Like... Everyone's just like, oh, it's just a act of imagination. And it's like, no, this girl's going to cause problems. She she could kill somebody at one point because she believes they're a monster. It's a, it's a bit scary. But so, yeah, there, she has a, a first. Sometimes it's hard to tell if her friends are in, see what she sees or not. But I think uh, everything is kind of happening in her head. And she thinks people see stuff because... There is a, a a moment that she has she has a multiple I'll call them hallucinations because that's that's really what they're like breaks from reality, um, but during her second hallucination, it's very clear that something's happening in the room, and her friends are not very far away from her and they do not see it at all, but she sees it clearly and she's freaking out about it. I think she sees like a uh, there's ghosts moving stuff around and she is freaking out about it starts running around, and, uh, yeah, they have to clean a room, apparently, or no, you know what, there is, a. they're, they're at lunch, I believe, and something happens, and Mona, Mona, th- Mona throws, uh, evidently, because, I mean, she's hallucinating, so Mona throws, like, uh, pudding or something at, uh, the annoying popular girl, Angela, but she sees it as like a ghost having done it, and then it starts a big food fight. And then Mona and her two friends are in the office, and it's like, I mean, her friends are like the fucking Manson clan. They're like, they're like fucking, they're a uh, 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 ride or die. I mean, because they didn't do anything. You don't see them do anything. But Mona and her two friends get detention for for starting the food fight, which I think is just. Ridiculous. There's no reason her friends should be in there, but uh, because they hang around this crazy chick, they get uh, yeah, they get uh, roped in. Evidently, I mean, this is this is how cults start. Like, I would not be surprised. I would like to see a a a, a show made later on in uh, Mona's life where she's just a, a batshit crazy older woman with just a weird cult of people and uh yeah it doesn't i mean it seems very scary it's 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 it's, yeah it's legitimately dangerous she's attacking things she's seeing things that aren't there it's it's much akin to uh if anybody is a fan of comedy the comedy bang bang podcast or television show there is a character named dalton wilcox who is a cowboy poet poet laureate of the west and uh he is constantly thinking people are vampires and Frankensteins and mummies and monsters from the Black Lagoon. And so he is murdering these people that uh, his only reasons most of the time are that they give him a little bit of guff. And then he asks them if they're a monster and uh, they are usually confused and then he shoots them. That's that's usually how it goes down. Sometimes it's a stake to the heart. Sometimes, you know, you know, silver bullets. Sometimes you light them on fire. But uh I think Mona could be going in that way. And I mean, she's a sweet girl. She has good intentions, right? It's like a, there's that saying, the, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And I feel that way for Mona. She's trying to help, but she's fucking crazy. She's going to hurt somebody. Uh, yeah, but all, all, all of uh, 
there is a moment in the episode where there is a, a bunch of shaking and a bunch of crazy stuff going on in a room. And from Mona's perspective, it's like this gigantic green ghost. It's kind of like Slimer, more or less. They're kind of just ripping off uh, Ghostbusters. But it's kind of like this big Slimer-esque ghost that's shaking the room and fucking stuff up. And it seems like the whole class sees it and they're all freaking out. Uh, but what it turns out to be is just construction. Uh, and that was like causing all of the problems in the school because there was like other stuff that was happening earlier on the, in the episode where like uh, the the principal's hat was flying down the hallway and stuff. And uh, it was obviously a draft created by something, but Mona thought it was a ghost taking stuff. And so, uh, yeah, but it turns out it's all construction. And yes, it is clear that Mona is just crazy. And this this reminds me, too, of another show that I want to talk about at some point is Kid Paddle, which I liked a lot. Um, but I feel like that's kind of a similar thing. Um, I feel like Kid, the whole thing about that show is Kid kind of, he loved game or like video games and he would fall into kind of a weird psychotic thing of seeing the world as these video games um calvin and Hobbes is a thing like that too i'm realizing now that i really like shows the things i like the most are shows where people are just having psycho psychotic breaks with reality and fighting uh, supernatural things or going on weird adventures Bridge Terabithia is another one. I love that shit, even though that is possibly the, one of the most depressing movies ever. I loved it as a kid, but I could not watch it now. I would I would cry so much, and just when, uh, uh, if you haven't seen it, I won't ruin it or the book or anything, but when a, a, a certain thing happens in the, in the story, that just breaks me. I couldn't even... I couldn't even think about watching that now. It's just too fucking sad. And it's like, it's for kids, which I realize the uh, the reason the author, it, the reason it is so depressing is because the author's son had a friend who uh, tragically uh, died, I believe, by like a strike of lightning or something. Um, so she made to, a book to kind of help uh, her son cope or whatever, which is very nice and stuff, but fuck, it's depressing. I loved it as a kid, but it is one of, I, I didn't have as many feelings back then. I think I, like, stuffed them down a lot, so I kind of, uh, it didn't affect me as much, but now I could not handle Bridge to Terabithia. But a thing I wanted to also show is, like, I really did love, uh, um, Mona the Vampire. Like, see if I can lift it up here. If you can see, but on the edge of my screen there, right there, there's a Mona the Vampire sticker. There's also BTS. There's, yeah, a lot of stuff. But, um, love that Mona the Vampire. But I'm actually going to show you, uh, I have a few books, but I, I th it might be because of this show, but I loved all this, uh, fantastic, you know, creatures, mythological kind of stuff, zombies, you know, vampires, loved all that stuff, fairies, so I'm going to show you uh, one of the books I have, I have a few different ones, but I'll show you this one, so yeah, the, I have two two books here, and realize that these are from my childhood, I'm not necessarily uh, buying these now to try to learn stuff, uh, I realize it's all not real and stuff, but I do enjoy just kind of the world and the stuff, I kind of want to get a uh, uh, D and D, uh, beastie or like a monster manual, just to have because it's kind of fun. But I do have Pathfinder and I have Pathfinder books and stuff, so that's uh, more or less the same thing. But this is the thing. I mean, it's still in great condition. I've had for a long time. Uh, it's called the the Fantasy Encyclopedia. Here, it's a very pretty book, but it's a guide to the fabulous beasts and magical beings. From elves and dragons to vampires and wizards. Fuck yeah. I want to see uh, if I can see when this was put on. I mean, it's in great condition still. Uh, let's see. Oh, the forward is from Jonathan Stroud. Which, uh, if you've uh, uh, Amulet of Samarkand, 
don't know if you've ever uh, read that book. It was the Baron. No, not Baron somebody. That's a different thing. Ah, I can't remember. But there was a book series by Jonathan Stroud that's uh, really, really good. And yeah, the first book is called Amulet of Samarkand. So this is from 2005. So that's probably, I would assume, maybe around where I got it. Maybe a little bit later. But I probably most likely got this from Scholastic Book Orders, I would assume. And uh, this one, I think this had a different cover to it, but Mysteries of the Unexplained. Oh, you know what? Maybe not. You know what? I don't think I actually read this. This is some weird other shit. Maybe I did read this, but I don't remember this. This is some old stuff. This has my mother's name in it. Oh, this is from Reader's Digest. So I think maybe... Maybe my mom ordered this from Reader's Digest. This is from 87. I literally have no idea. I thought this was mine. I thought maybe uh, this was another book, and I'd lost the... Uh, paper cover thing to it but apparently not this is all in like black and white and stuff too this is kind of actually cool this feels like a real old school book that you would look up in like a movie where it's like oh fuck i need to learn about vampires i need to learn about uh all this stuff world's fa most famous monster they're calling nessie the world's most famous monster huh. oh there's amelia Earhart. oh this is interesting this is, doesn't need to be shown on this, but uh, odd. So yeah, those are just a couple, a couple books there that uh, what, well one of them that's mine. Apparently another one is my mom's. I had no idea. I guess she's into that stuff or was more into it maybe at some point. This kind of does remind me too. Uh, my grandmother, she's passed now, um, uh, but my grandma Vi. Vi uh, short for Violet, but we call her Grandma Vi. Um, she was very into UFOs. I remember she died when she was like 84. And when she was like 82, maybe 80. I remember we had a discussion. I was also drinking at the time. So it is embarrassing thinking back on it that I was probably just wasted. But no, maybe I was sober for this. Uh discussion but I remember her talking about UFOs and like she believed in aliens and UFOs like you better fucking believe she was watching one of those shows and it was so funny because it was like I don't know if it was ancient aliens or something but she was so into it and I was just I wanted to like argue with her but it's like oh, just let her have it she likes it she's interested I don't know it's kind of funny though and just like you didn't know stuff about your grandparents, or maybe maybe they get older and they get into new weird stuff. Like, uh, yeah, it's it's odd. But so, so yeah, that was the first episode of uh, Mona the Vampire to get, get back on topic. Um, and and then the next one here is my uh, so yeah, evidently it's the episodes don't have you know huge story arcs. I mean, there are only like 11, 12 minute. Uh, things so it's kind of like there's a bit of a problem and they figure it out fairly quickly it's not too big of a deal so it's like yeah she she lost her book uh left all these uh oh I guess I guess if you want to know what happened to the book uh the popular girl took it they immediately knew she took it they waited a little bit to ask her what happened to it she told them uh I guess they found it somewhere and it was as easy as that and then yeah, they had to put the ghosts back, and they used a vacuum cleaner, like like Ghostbusters. So yeah, they were just ripping off Ghostbusters, but uh, yeah, that was literally that's literally the episode. It's not not huge, not big crazy stories. Um, so the second episode uh, revolves around uh, these new characters, Sam and Ella, and they are food inspectors. But uh, uh, I guess then just inspecting how good the yeah, how good the school's food is, and, 
Mona is just learning. The class is just learning about germs and whatnot. And so they hear about uh, the germ salmonella. And they they uh, had they met salmonella at the start of the episode. And salmonella acting weird because they're not actual chefs. They're pretending to be chefs to do, uh, you know, the secret uh, food uh, uh, stuff to see if the food's good or whatnot. And uh, and Mona hears them talking about, uh, like, they spilled some chili or whatever. Uh, they, they test chili. They realize it has salmonella food poisoning in it. And they accidentally spill it. And then they're kind of like, oh, shit, clean it up because we don't want anybody to know uh, that we're not actual chefs. And Mona overhears that, which is bad news if you got a crazy girl who has psychotic episodes and sees things as conspiracy theories and crazy stuff like that. So uh, she immediately assumes, she learns about germs and immediately assumes that, yep, Sam and Ella are poisoning the food and comes to the conclusion, well, she sees it, I believe, in her head that uh, Sam and Ella turn into these parasites and then shrink down and go into the food when uh, really the food was already tainted with salmonella poisoning from the previous chef. So salmonella are fine people. They actually don't do anything wrong. The The thing that does it is uh, when salmonella, I, I think they're, they were probably planning on throwing out the chili, but as uh, because Mona wants to help, but she's a crazy person, so she causes problems all the time, she takes the chili in an effort, because she already, at this point, realizes Sam and Ella, Sam and Ella, oh my god, they're terrible bacteria that's gonna, you know, infest the food and make us all sick, so she goes to the kitchen and sees that there's this chili, so she takes it downstairs, she takes it, her and Lily go find a place, and they go and hide it, so nobody will eat it, but the goddamn principal, he has a nose like a fucking dash hound. No, that's not like a bloodhound. That's a dash hound is like the dash a dash hound. I don't even think is how it's doctioned. I think I'm saying it wrong. Yeah, I'm not smart. I'm not trying to be smart doing this. I'm just trying to talk about a show I like. But anyway, the principal has a nose like a goddamn bloodhound like a fucking drug-sniffing dog, and he can sniff that chili. And boy, does it smell good, because I guess the cooks were reheating it. Salmonella reheated it for some reason, which I don't understand why. But at that moment, after after Mona has moved it, he smells it, and he's like fucking, like Toucan Sam, he follows that scent all the way down to the basement, and... Mona, even uh, uh, no, like not wanting anybody to eat it, she locked the door. Had she just left the chili there, that Salmonella probably would have thrown it out. Nobody would have ingested it. But because the principal has such a fucking amazing sense of smell, he fucking sniffs it out. Goes down to the to the uh, uh, the basement where there's a locked door. He has the lock because he's the principal. He unlocks it and boom, gets food poisoning very quickly. And so he's freaking ending up in the hospital. Also, Sam and Ella look real rough. They kind of look like, they look like uh, Angelica from Rugrats, her doll, uh, like brought to life almost. Their hair, they're both like bald on top. It's very thin. They look just like frightening individuals. So I kind of do get a little bit why Mona thought they were sketchy because, I mean, they were being sketchy and they looked fucking crazy. They looked like crackheads that fucking tried to give themselves haircuts while they were high and fucked it up completely. So it is, they were frightening, but yeah, that's just another thing I I noticed, um, which is very odd. I don't know why, why they made them look so weird or why they made them both not have hair on the top of their heads, especially the Ella, because, I mean, she's a girl, and it's just very odd. So, like I said, she every time she sees or figures out something, she tells her friends, and their friends immediately believe her. There is no second of, well, you know what, Mona, it might actually be this. It's like, no, they believe her 100%. It's monsters. It's fucking people infesting the food. It's, uh, it's, it, she's 100% right all the time, which is a little bit 
frightening, in my opinion. But, uh, so they go to the hospital where the principal is at, and, uh, they realize he's sick, and they want to help him. They realize that Salmonella, or Salmonella, I guess, they realize that Sam and Ella are in the, uh, the, the principal, so they need to make him better, even though there's, he's in the hospital and getting cared for. Nope, Sam and Ella are apparently monsters, and they have to go in there and save them. So they bring a uh, little rocket ship that looks suspiciously like a butt plug, and they do the whole shrink ray thing on them that they use uh, uh, with, uh, they have like a water gun, and in their imagination, I guess, it shrinks, shrinks them down, and then somehow they get into a needle, which is never shown, it just shows them shrinking down, and somehow they end up in a syringe and go into the principal's bloodstream. So that, when I first saw the rocket ship that looked like a butt plug, I was like, oh no, they're gonna, they're not gonna shrink this down and say they shoved it in them, are they? Or like say they swallowed it, but it just looked, it looked too suspiciously like a butt plug, so I was a little bit afraid. But when they showed him, showed it get uh, sent through the bloodstream, which is very akin to like, uh, Reminded me of uh, Magic School Bus. I feel like they did that all the time. But so they pull pull one of those and up in his bloodstream. I mean, like I said, all this happens very short. It's a, they're very short episodes. So they kind of go in there. They uh, unclog an artery, which I guess is good for him. And uh, they, uh, uh, they, they force Salmonella out of him. And then they show a nurse step on Salmonella, which... Uh, I mean, they're bacteria, so I don't know how you would do that, but but it's psychosis, right? So it doesn't really need to make sense. So uh, they Sam and Ella get killed. The fucking Mona and uh, Lily, who are the ones that went in with the spaceship, they come out of the principal, and the principal is fine, and everybody's happy. Um, but uh, the the their their teacher at the end there after they've saved the principal the teacher just comes in and tells them they're just sitting on the bed like chilling with the with the with the principal even though I think he probably hates their guts cuz they're fucking annoying and crazy and always fucking up the school whatnot but uh he's all happy and chipper cuz he feels better and their teacher tells them uh to kind of peace out and uh Tells them that there's no toys allowed in the hospital, which really annoyed me. So it's like that's not a rule. You can't. They and she, they just had a spaceship there. They weren't even doing anything with it. And she's like, "Charlie, you brought a spaceship. I told you." Or maybe she didn't say "I tell you," but she, she was like, uh, "There's you brought a spaceship. There's no toys allowed in the hospital." And it's like that's not a rule. Who, whoever said that? Nobody ever said that. And the toys aren't allowed. In that. Shut up, bitch. But I think she was there to suck the principal's dick because she just showed up. There was no reason for the teacher to be there after hours unless she was, uh, I mean, I guess she, maybe she was just being nice and visiting the principal. But I think she was probably there to get a little of that catfish. Yeah, it's like a catfish mustache. It's pretty weird. I might intercut throughout this episode just little clips and stuff of uh, of the show. So, yeah, the teacher... Teacher comes, uh, tells them to kind of peace out, and uh, yeah, that's the end of the episode. So they're not not any crazy episodes, not big story arcs. Just uh, one is just a book that gets lost, and they find it, and everything's all they vacuum up ghosts, and it's, everything's all hunky dory, and then uh, and then Salmonella infest uh, infest a principal, and they have to get it out, and it's very quick. Ultimately, though. Um, I thought the show was still fun. I mean, the short episodes are silly and they're stupid. The girl obviously is having horrible psychosis. She should probably be put in some kind of uh, mental hospital. But I mean, it's fun for now. It's fun and it's cute. And she hasn't really hurt anybody, I guess. I mean, uh, like I said, I haven't seen this show in a long time. And uh, this is the only episode I saw. So. Maybe stuff gets worse. Maybe she does crazier stuff. Um, I don't know. But it is troubling. I will say it is a bit troubling. But yeah, I think it's very, it's a very fun show. Um, fun for boys and girls. I mean, I don't, I never had any, uh, 
thought about the main character being a girl. Same with Kim Possible or, like, Proud Family. I watched a lot of shows that uh, had girls as the as the lead. And I think, I think it's more annoying or it, like, makes it weirder to announce it and be like, oh, girl power, whatever. Just make it a show, a cool show, and then it appeals to all kids. You make the characters cool. You don't have to have them being all rah-rah about, you know, I, I don't know. I, I do get the girl power thing and whatnot and uh, should be proud of being a girl. I totally get that. But I think I think the best way to show how awesome girls are is to show a girl just being awesome and just being a person. And you don't have to talk about that she's a girl, especially in, now in today's age. It's like, eh, it doesn't really matter. Just make it cool, a cool person. And that's all anybody wants to see, I feel like. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, uh, still good, I guess is the question and the point of this podcast. Is Mona the Vampire still good? And I would say, yeah, it's, uh, it's still good. I think it still holds up. I think it's a fun show that I would show, um, you know, I'd show my little cousin or whatever. Um, yeah, I think it's fun, especially if you have a kid that's into this stuff. I mean, I loved it. I loved monsters and stuff. I mean, this is right up my alley, a little girl that has... Like, I wanted to be these kids, for sure. I would have definitely been Charlie, the kind of little cuck boy that just listens to everything Mona says. I kind of was that guy a little bit. Um, <laughs> at points, you know, you get older, and then and then Mona starts dating other guys and banging other guys, and you just, you're trying to be a friend and think, maybe, maybe one day she'll, you know, I'm such a nice guy that she'll, you know, she'll, She'll see how nice of a guy I am. That doesn't work, by the way. It doesn't work that way, Charlie. I think uh, Charlie should hook up with Lily. I think that probably works. And Mo- Mona's on her own trip. That's also another thing, is you don't want to date a girl that's constantly going through psychotic episodes. I, I dated one girl that was uh, that had a bit of... Um, uh, uh, um, oh, I don't want to say it wrong. Uh, but she had some, some mental health issues where... She would, you know, see stuff and, and you know, hear stuff and whatnot uh, if it was bad. And and uh, she smoked weed one time, which she wasn't supposed to do. But she was drinking, and she thought it would be okay. And uh, it was not okay, and it was very scary for her. I mean, it was obviously very scary for her. But just not knowing, not having gone through that before and seeing somebody freak out uh, like that, it's not fun. So, uh, yeah, just uh, it's a bit of a... It's a good show, but it's a bit of like a, yeah, she should, somebody should help Mona a little bit. I mean, mental hospitals are pretty, can be pretty awful places, and I think sometimes they can do more harm than good in certain circumstances, t- depending where you go, what kind of treatment you get. But I don't know if it's safe to just have Mona just out there, just living her best life. As I mean, it's good for her, but it's dangerous for the rest of the public. But yeah, anyway, so I uh, hope you enjoyed this first episode of uh, Still Good. Next next time, uh, I think we're probably going to talk about What's With Andy. Um, this also made me think of uh, doing Kid Paddle, which I think these are all probably Canadian shows. I think, yeah, like I said, it's Canadian and French. I'm not sure why French specifically. Maybe it's just because they made it Canadian and maybe did dubs for both languages. So they thought, fuck it, let's just put it out in France too. I don't know. But uh yeah, so next week is probably is gonna be What's with Andy, then maybe Kid Paddle after that. I don't know, I have a few ideas for shows. Um maybe at some point try to get guests on and talk about uh what shows they liked and uh, talk about an episode of that. And yeah, so then we'll just see see where this goes. It might go we might start looking back at even older shows, uh maybe shows I haven't seen. I don't know. We'll see where it goes, but uh first episode Mona the Vampire hope you enjoyed it and if you didn't uh, hear about Mona the Vampire or whatever there's a link to the uh, the episode in the description there's a bunch of the episodes for free uh, up on YouTube so I would say just check them out they're they're fairly good you can watch them with kids they're totally uh, uh, kid friendly and yeah uh, check them out uh, check out the books um, yeah anyway thank you uh, for watching this episode still good And we'll catch you next time. All right. Thanks again, everybody. Peace out.